When I was just starting in the first year at the conservatory, then my teacher told us that we had to work with melodies in three different levels. So if you're learning a song, then first you have to be able to learn to just play the melody. Of course, you need to learn the melody. Then you need to be able to turn that melody into a chord melody and put some chords under it. And then the final most difficult level was to completely harmonize the melodies in block chords. So for each note in the melody, find a chord that you can fit in there and turn that into a complete arrangement. Now you don't probably always want to play arrangements like that. It can get a little bit heavy and a little bit clunky to harmonize everything all the time. But at the same time, working on all these different melodies and harmonizing them gave me a lot of options when I'm making chord melody because I really understood a lot more about how to harmonize notes and what was possible. And it also really helped me develop my ability to harmonize my own lines when I'm soloing, which is playing chord solos. My name is Jens Larsen. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and improve the way that you solo, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. The way I'm going to do this is that I'm going to go over an arrangement of the song Solar and then talk about how I'm harmonizing the melody there. I think it's very useful to do this with a real song because it's going to be different than just giving you some sort of scale exercise and other exercises. And you really want to use some real music when you're working on this. The first two bars of the song is on the tonic chord, so it's on a C minor. And if we look at the melody, then we kind of have the melody split in two parts. We have two chord tones, which is the root and the fifth, and then two leading notes, which is the major seven and the ninth. Now, this is just one way of making the distinction. You can also harmonize this in other ways. The way I'm doing it here is sort of a little bit bebop-ish. Uh, maybe that's also because when I originally made this arrangement then I just learned about all the Barry Harris stuff and I was really checking out a lot of bebop so that was the sound that I was really attracted to. And what I'm doing here is that for the chord tones, for the, so for the C I'm playing a C minor 6 and then for the two leading notes I'm using a B diminished, so essentially a G7 and then going back to the root and then using this C minor 6 voicing for the the other melody note, the G. So I'm, I have on the long sustained note on this C minor chord, I also have a C minor voicing. That's an important thing to keep in mind. If you think about this, one way of harmonizing melodies is to sort of split the melody up into being leading notes and chord tones, and then trying to work with it like that so that whenever you have a melody that has a chord tone, then it's gonna become, in this case, like a C minor six, and then Maybe if we have the next note here, then that's going to be a diminished chord because that's a, essentially a dominant in this case. Another chord tone, so that's a C minor 6. Leading note, so that's a diminished chord. Again, C minor 6 for the root here. Diminished chord for the third. C minor 6 for the fourth. Diminished, and then we're back. And if I play the scale like this, that's a Barry Harris um, 6 diminished minor scale. And that's not everything that that's for, but that's one way of thinking about this. And that works quite well for just having these different scales harmonized. The only thing is you have to watch out a little bit because if you rely on a system, sometimes maybe the note that you want to harmonize on a minor chord is the ninth. And then in this case, you're going to be playing a diminished chord and that's, that's not going to work. So you need to always think about the context and use your ears because if you only rely on some really simple system, well, then you're going to play like a really simple system. And in music, simple systems always fail. The next part of the melody is a 2 5 one, 2 f So it's G minor 7, C7. And I'm really thinking exactly in the same way. So I'm splitting up the melody into being chord tones, the leading notes, and then I'm using the chord itself for the chord tones. and I'm using a diminished chord for the leading notes. Of course, you can use other things than the diminished chord. You could also make a scale where you're using some sort of subdominant chord, or maybe you can work with chromatic leading notes also and then try and use that. There are different ways of working with this, but in this case, I'm just using the diminished chord because that's 
really easy and it kind of fits with the sound of this piece, I think. So G minor, that's the, the first part of the melody is really go, going from A up to B flat. Though. It's almost the same melody, in fact. So we start with the diminished chord on the A because that's, that's not a chord tone. And then up to the third, which is harmonized with just the G minor seven chord. And then again, this encircling with diminished chords. And also here you can see the diminished chords on guitar are useful because I just need to move my hand. So they're easy to work with. If I had other chords, then they would be less easy to make inversions of. Back to the G minor seven. And then I'm actually keeping the G minor seven into the C seven bar. So that becomes sort of a C seven sus going to this C7 flat 9 before I go to F major 7. On the F major 7, then I'm still using the same idea of splitting in between chord tones and leading notes, but now I need to adjust it a little bit because one of the leading tones is a chromatic leading tone. I'm, by the way, really curious if you guys are also working with block chord arrangements like this, and if you're using the same arrangement method, so you're using this idea of splitting up the melody in chord tones and leading notes, or if you're using something else. So leave a comment on that. So the melody here is again just starting on on the on the third, harmonized with an F major seven. And then the next note is an A flat. So here, there are a few ways you could have done this, but the way I chose to do it was that I turned that into a C7 altered. So that's still kind of within the the same kind of thinking. Of course, in this case, you can also say, well, it's a chromatic leading note, so I want to harmonize it with a chromatic chord. Uh, but the thing is that the melody is like is this, and if I do, and then just only use chromatic leading notes, and all, only F major seven or major seven chords, then I don't think that sounds that nice. So I prefer the sound of having this dominant and then a diminished chord back to the original F major 7 and then we have the low C and in this case I think the low C I could have harmonized it like like this but I think it sounds nicer to just make it a triad and then have one one voice less and then a little bit less of a heavy voicing down there then from here it moves up to the melody is F and G I'm using a D minor and then an E diminished to move up to the F minor. The melody on the F minor 7, B flat 7 is completely identical to the way I'm playing the G minor 7, C7. So I'm not really going to talk about that. I'm also using exactly the same type of harmonization. It's just two frets lower. Learning how to make arrangements like this, I think is for the most part about just harmonizing a lot of different songs and getting really used to how to treat those melodies. And of course, there are a lot more options than just the diminished chord that I'm using all the time in, in this example. And uh, I think you're really gonna find out how that works if you start working with some themes and some melodies that have a lot more chromaticism in them. And for every Thursday lesson like this one that I'm publishing, then I'm also making a weekly extra lesson for some of the supporters over on Patreon. And this week I'm going to go over the Monk tune, Blue Monk, because that has a lot more chromaticism, so there are a lot more options when it comes to making block harmony for that song. If you want to join us over on Patreon and support this channel and help me make more videos, then check out my Patreon page, there's a link in the description of this video. Until now, I've mostly been using drop two voicings, and that's because drop two voicings are voicings that you're probably already kind of familiar with, and also because they work really well, they're very sort of consistent for harmonizing melodies they are easy to harmonize most melodies with. They do get a little bit heavy if you take the lower strings, I find. So that's also, as you can see, I, then I go to a triad, but at the same time, they will do the job quite well. And that's why they're just practical to work with if you want to start somewhere. And they're a little bit easier in that respect than the three note voicings. The two voicings, I think, are really the sound that you associate with, especially Wes, maybe also Josh Benson. I'm of course curious also, who is your favorite when it comes to block harmony and using chord solos where you're harmonizing everything like this because of course I think mine would be Wes and probably Joe Pass a little bit more than Benson but uh, who's out there who are you listening to leave a comment on the video on the E flat major 7 I start with just harmonizing the melody notes of the G with just E flat major 7 and then the next thing we get is a scale run so we got this and just to keep it practical then I'm harmonizing that by playing the melody and then having more or less a static voicing under that. 
actually in the end it's just G, but it's a G and a B flat in the beginning. And that's really just sort of the effect you have if you listen to a piano player playing a solo where they're sort of just playing, repeating the same voicing in the left hand and then playing a melody over that uh, in the right hand, you'll hear Bill Evans do that quite a lot when he's not doing complete uh, block chords because he doesn't do that all the time. He will do this approach as well and that works quite well for this. And then I'm repeating that, so first I drop two voicing for the E flat minor and then again just keeping a basic shell voicing under the melody and then back to drop two and then here I'm adding just a short chord step of the D half diminished just to sort of give us the chord change and then again we have another melody that's moving a lot uh, so I'm using just a static voicing and then a moving melody changing to G7 and then again diminished and then I'm back to the beginning of the theme. Since this topic is really related to chord solos, then if you want to check out some more videos that I did on chord solos, then check out this playlist where there are some really useful exercises and some stuff you can check out and also a few example solos if you want to get, dig into some chord solos a la Wes and Joe Pass. If this is the first time you see one of my videos you want to learn more about jazz guitar, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and until next time.